part of taking a deep dive into uh, how they are operating their businesses, which is one of the strong parentage ones. And not only that, take a view on where things settle uh, now uh, in the NBFC space after all stakeholders, the government, the various companies and participants have done their bit. So we thought of, uh, uh, began by asking him on how he is analyzing this entire NBFC mess and how things are gradually coming back to normalcy. Uh, here's a slice of the conversation which I had with him. The fact is that of the GDP today of the country, 31% of the GDP is contributed by the SME sector. And 26% of all employment is done in the SME sector. But if you look at the data, you will find that the banks have only funded to the extent of 6% of their funding has gone to the SME. And therefore, most of the growth that is taking place in the SME sector has been because of the funding by the NBFCs. And if this funding gets choked, the whole economic activity of the country can also come to a halt. And therefore, it is very important for the whole system to get together to see how we can tackle this issue. And that's where I feel that if we can get the Reserve Bank, the big uh, banks, whether in the public sector, private sector, other lending institutions <coughs> such as the LIC, the National Housing Bank, NABARD, and <clears throat> Finance Ministry and other officials to get together and talk through these issues. Because if we don't settle this, there can be a crisis. And in the past as well, I have seen whether it was in 2008, whether it was in 2013, when liquidity was drying up in terms of the mutual funds and in NBFCs, the Reserve Bank and the government had taken special measures. So I think we need to act now for this as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, very quickly, I'll just take the clock back. Uh, in your uh, investor day, uh, Pirabal investor day, I believe you had uh, given some indication that you were observing some signs, uh, the way business was being conducted in this space, which gave you some amount of indication or that probably things may blow up in the near term. What were those signs which you observed? And sitting now, uh, how are you uh, envisaging things to pan out for the sector in the next two, three quarters? So at that time, in fact, I had warned to some extent that I was seeing that the NBFCs, that there were many new NBFCs which were sprouting up. And many of the existing ones also were giving loans at there was no risk uh, adjusted return that was being taken into account. They were not taking into account the risk, which was just trying to build the mm -hmm. book because the valuations were very attractive in the market. And hence I said that it is possible that you will get a blow up, which is what has happened much earlier than what I thought. But therefore, I think there are issues with NBFCs. Let's accept it. Many of them have issues. But I feel that today is not the time to attack all of them. Today is the time for the whole system, actually including, if I would say, the media as well as, uh, as I said, all the authorities involved to see that we build back confidence. It doesn't mean that all are bad. Today, every NBFC is painted in a bad way. And if we want the economic crisis to get over, if we want the country to go ahead, we need to get together. You know, even a month ago, India was on really a roll as far as the economy is concerned. We were meeting so many foreign investors, all felt that India was the best market. Now, thanks to some external issues, just as because of the oil price hike, the rupee has taken a beating because of certain other measures taken by other countries. And then that these are external issues. They add to this the NBFC issue, and uh, that's where there is a problem, and we have to get together. In fact, uh, uh, things actually are getting uh, improved each passing day. Now, liquidity, most uh, several of your industry peers also are reporting uh, that money is being dispersed to them and sanctions are happening. And uh, for a day or two, there was an absolute uh, freezing of liquidity, but now I, we are also getting signs that money is back in the system. How are things standing right now for your own company, be it for uh, liquidity, for business visibility, 
right now? So, uh, fortunately for us, since we had predicted this a while ago, and I had also said that we have enough equity and we have been conservative as far as equity and our debt equity ratios are concerned. Therefore, uh, sometime in uh, the end of last year, we had raised uh, 7,000 crores in terms of equity. That itself was the largest equity raised by any non-banking financial company. So that, uh, that was a QIP where we got really high quality investors. These are all long-term investors. So that was one part. Secondly, so today we have almost 20,000 crores in terms of equity which is in, in the financial services business, which gives us a strong base. The second thing if you see as far as we are concerned is that the promoters have got a significant stake in the business. So we are like 50% in that area, which is a large amount. And there is no pressure as far as the short term is concerned, as far as the promoters are concerned in terms of share prices going up and down. Third thing I think is that the quality of the book that we have, we've been the most conservative. If you look at it, our gross NPAs are today only in the 0.3, 0 0.4% range. And we've provided for much more at 1.8%. We have a very robust risk system as well. So I feel that uh, we are in a good position and the fact is borne out that even this most challenging, you know, talked about the two or three days where there was a lot of tension, we've been able to still meet our commitments for both disbursements as well. So in some ways, if you look at it, if I looked at it only as a personal thing, it's in crisis that the, you separate out the men from the boys. So in some ways, it's good for us. But I don't think it's good for the country. So today, we are in a good position. And what we have been saying for a, time, uh, a bit and what we have been preparing ourselves is actually playing out. In fact, uh, you know, that brings me to the next question. Your asset quality numbers, return ratio numbers are absolutely, uh, you know, uh, best in the sector, even globally comparable. Uh, but one niggling fear in the last couple of weeks which has emerged is that uh, your overall books dependence on the infrastructure slash real estate space makes some section of the analysts slightly nervous. What would you like to tell them something about the profile of these developers you work with or your relationships with them? So uh, uh, as far as we're concerned, our book to, uh, is started with real estate. Uh, lending, but today is diversified. It's a book which contains both real estate as well as the corporate, uh, other than real estate, other corporates, both in the large and the small and medium uh, scale sector. We've also gone into consumer lending with a housing finance. But coming uh, to the real estate, which is still a significant about 35, 40% of our book, I would uh, say that what our strategy right from the beginning has been, first of all, we only go for the top A-class developers. And why do we go for A-class developers? Because we believe that these are the people who have the maximum skin in the game. And these are the ones who want to survive over a longer period of time. So they will not easily default. And this has also been borne out by the fact that after Rera and all, you will see that these are the only ones which have survived. And we had kind of anticipated that in a crisis, the strong who survive, and these will be the ones. Second thing is, as far as real estate is concerned, we do have a good understanding of the business because we ourselves have been developers. Yeah. So we've been on the opposite side. We know what the challenges of development are. We also know what, uh, I mean, where funds are needed, where, what things can go right and what can go wrong. So we build all that into our system. And then we are a very systems and process driven business, whether it is risk which reports directly to the board, whether it is legal which reports directly to the board, whether, where <clears throat> our investment managers and all are thorough professionals who will not, who will take as much care so these are some of the things that we do which are actually different from what many other companies do. And that's one of the reasons why we've been able to 
actually have a good, uh, let's say, good results both in terms of uh, ROE as well as in the uh, quality of assets. And many people raise the question, you know, you've given to some large builders, large amounts of funding, how do you manage that? And we have been actually very open and transparent. We've seen what, we've been able to share what uh, uh, businesses have been with, uh, with other, with the developers and how we've been able to recover. Okay, funds. that's Ajay Piramal.